Welcome back to Weeknight Mysteries Podcast. I am Yuras, your host. I'm here with my co-host, Rain. Today, we're going to be discussing a missing persons case from 2009. We want to talk about Rhonda Javhari's disappearance case. Rain, you're with me. Have you ever heard about Rhonda's case before? No, not at all. I absolutely have no idea. I think you vaguely told me about this case, but it did not, like, details are kind of forgotten. Yeah. Could you kindly remind me? Of course, of course. No, I think let's just start from the beginning. Um, I briefed you a little bit about this case, but this is a very strange case. This is a case of a woman who mm-hmm. essentially vanished into thin air. Um, we have a woman who left some clues but it's one of those very weird disappearances where you just don't know what happened it's kind of like um has a sense of uh or like a hint of brian schaefer remember brian schaefer the man who went missing after a night out it's kind of similar even though this wasn't a night out but this woman randa just vanished and there's really no way of telling at this point what happened to her but there are some uh let's say theories that are being proposed i am personally leaning one of two ways that what could have happened to randa but before we jump into the theories i want to kind of introduce you um her story a little bit and then let's jump into the day when she vanished well it happened actually on a night so we're gonna jump into it if that's okay Oh, wait, one quick question. Of course. Did she vanish in her own place or outside? She went missing in her own, from her own home. Inside? It seems like inside. It's oh, hard that's to, crazy. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. So, Randa Johari is a missing woman from Fenton in a city in Janice County in the Michigan state. She was last heard from on February 10th. 10th back in 2009 just a couple of months ago it was her 15th anniversary since she's been missing she's been missing for more than 15 years at this uh, at the time of this recording in the evening on the day when she vanished she last spoke to her sister on the phone within her apartment Randa was 42 when she vanished. At the time of this recording, it's been more than 15 years, and Randa, if she is still alive, she would be 57 right now. Randa stands at 5 foot 1. Her last known weight was around 100 pounds. She is a Caucasian female with brown hair, brown eyes, and she is of Lebanese descent. She might use the first name Brandy, according to some sources. Both of her ears are pierced. She also has a caesarean section scar on her abdomen from birth, from giving birth. Some of her molars are missing, and she wears a partial dental bridge. Randa is also a chain smoker, Another notable characteristic about her is that she tends to walk at a very slow pace as well. So these are just the descriptors of Randa Javhari. Um, I have some images of Randa uh, here as well, and we're going to be showing these images on the YouTube channel. When you look at Randa, what do you think? She's absolutely gorgeous, just throwing it out there, but she looks like a career woman, actually. She looks like that, right? Yeah. I mean, some of the images that we have are her profile shots, you know? So, mm-hmm. like the real deal type of pictures. Randa Javari was born on June 2nd in 1966 to David and Anis Javari in Lebanon. Randa's family moved to the United States when she was just a child. She grew up in a city called Holly in Michigan. This city, Holly, is pretty much adjacent to Fenton, to the city where she went missing from. However, uh, throughout her life, Randa lived in various places across the United States. She lived sometime in Florida, 
in Hawaii, and she also has some family members in Ohio. She has a very big family. She has eight siblings. Uh, she's from a, a family of eight siblings. She has six other sisters and one brother. That's a big family, right? Randa had previously worked as an actress and starred in several films, such as Arnold Schwarzenegger's film True Lies and 1980s crime drama Jake and the Fat Man. Have you ever heard of any of these? No, but I know Arnold, so that meant she was a pretty big celebrity. Well, not celebrity, actress. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't seen any of these, so I can't really Same. say. She also has written a book called Letter from a Rose, and she was considered a very talented actress and an artist overall. Randa Jawari was actually suffering from medical conditions at the time when she went missing. She had a bipolar disorder as well as depression and other medical conditions as well. She was very weak. She needed medication and is actually considered legally incapacitated. Randa was supposed to be taking medication for her bipolar disorder. She was to get an injection every 15 days. However, she preferred alternative treatments and had stopped taking this bipolar medication for three months leading up to her disappearance. That can't be... That just immediately for me personally, when I was going through the information on Randa's case, the fact that she stopped taking her Bipolar medication, three months leading up to her disappearance, that to me sounded like a red flag. What is your take on that? Is there a reason why she stopped? I'm not really sure, but please, add some more because I'm just going to have some water. Oh, water breaks again, okay. Uh, it's pretty odd that she just stopped. I'm not sure if it was because of a financial situation or just a personal decision, but uh, that's just odd, honestly. And... Wouldn't that contribute to the fact that she went missing right after? Yeah, that's uh, one of the theories that uh, maybe uh, her decision to take to stop taking this mm -hmm. injectable medication that she was supposed to take every 15 days may have led towards her disappearance. But there's other things that are happening. Trust me, there are some really weird and creepy things that are happening. But I guess this is the first clue that we yeah, have. Yeah, it seems this. like it. Yeah, right. Seems like the most obvious thing for now. For now, at this point, yes. Um, to answer your question, was it a financially related decision or a personal decision? From my research, I think it was kind of post everywhere that I've read about it that it was her personal decision that she was seeking alternative uh, treatments mm, I see all right so Randa as I've mentioned well she has a cesarean c-section scar meaning mm -hmm. that she had given birth at the time of her disappearance she had a daughter and this daughter is still alive and everything's okay um named Matilyn, who was just five years old at the time when Randa went missing. Randa loved Matilyn very much. Um, from all the sources that I've gathered, Matilyn was Randa's life and she was the most important person in the world for Randa. However, due to her medical conditions, Randa's mother Anis was actually the legal guardian of Madeline because Randa was unable to fully take care of herself, therefore she couldn't care for her beloved daughter at the same time. Let, let me take another quick break because I need some water break. <laughs> Despite her medical conditions, Randa was described as a peaceful, free-spirited woman who was a very kind person. She cared for others very much. She was actually even living independently in an apartment located at 3464 West Shiawasi Avenue in Fenton. And we have her uh, apartment, I guess, building on the Google map here. I kind of took some uh, images 
So we see from the satellite view and then we also see from the Google Street view, this apartment complex. Now, when I look at this, this does not look to me like an apartment complex. This looks like a house. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I was supposed to say that. I was expecting like a building and like, a, I don't know, like a three bedroom apartment apartment. But this is a massive house. Yeah, and this is actually gonna be very... You know, when I read it through her story, some of the details and some of the clues that will come up later on in the story actually would way, would make way more, I guess, sense or would be less kind of, I would say, damning if this was in fact a stereotypical apartment complex, like a big apartment building with like a lot of flats in it. But just because this is looks more like a house than an apartment building some of the clues will be very damning and i think you'll understand what i'm talking about soon enough randa did not have a driver's license a credit card or a cell phone she did have a land phone in her apartment but she did not have a cell phone she relied on walking or getting lifts from her family members and acquaintances in order to get around the city of Fenton. Due to her health condition, she had participated in several programs in the nearby city of Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan is a slightly bigger uh, city. It's 20 miles north from Fenton. Randa was in constant contact with her family members. So her abrupt disappearance was completely out of the ordinary and immediately alarmed her family. So this is the backstory of Randa Javhari. So Randa Javhari was last heard from on February 10th in 2009, uh, which was a Tuesday, by the way. So kind of, you know, first part of the week. On this day in the morning at around 10 a.m., Randa was wandering around asking for money at a local McDonald's located on Owen Road, which was a mile away from her apartment. Randa had apparently frequented this particular McDonald's on a regular basis. Eventually, a Fenton police officer had arrived uh, after he was dispatched to this McDonald's and he drove Randa home. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, she was wandering around at a local McDonald's that she has frequented on a regular basis it's fairly close to her home if you can see it's around a mile away yeah but it's still a walk though it's still a walk yeah but at the same time it's like asking money at mcdonald's was oh, this walking from your home towards mcdonald's just to ask for money uh what's the reason no i mean maybe that's a place where a lot of people are at with like spare change so i i guess if you're gonna ask money that's it makes sense to ask money at the McDonald's. Sure. But the the, the question that uh, jumps to my mind, is this a regular activity that Randa was doing or was this something out of the ordinary? I was not able to find this. Uh, probably not because the cops were called. Yeah, but maybe it's not the first time. Yeah, possibly. You know, and my, my question is, was asking for money a, a normal thing for Randa? Because she was living in an apartment and she has a big family mm -hmm. that I'm pretty sure could help her out financially. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this is a normal, normal behavior mm -hmm. leading up to her disappearance. Because if it's not, if she had never done this before, then this is alarming when you think about her I don't know, mental state potentially? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Uh, something jumps up into my mind. Okay. Substance abuse. But then again, mm -hmm. not judging, just pure speculation. No, of course. I mean, we're just talking about yeah, the case here. Was there any... Uh, give me a spoiler. Was there any substance abuse that you... No. There was mm. nothing mentioned. Other the fact than, you know, she was just a chain smoker. That's like the only kind of substance that was ever mm -hmm. mentioned was the fact that she was um, smoking cigarettes. But I don't know. Maybe she was abusing some sort of substances. But this has never been mentioned anywhere. Mm -hmm. So we can only guess. So in the evening on that same day, her mother had visited her in her apartment. She had brought her dinner and also laid out her clothing for the next day so i assume her mother was taking care of randa on a fairly regular basis she was kind of going to her apartment kind of helping her out a little bit with the day-to-day -day tasks 
Later that night, around 11.30 p.m. on a Tuesday evening, Randa had talked with her sister Fadia Jawari via the landline telephone from within her apartment. She told Fadia that she was tired and she will go to bed soon. Fadia was the last known person to speak to Randa. So once again, they spoke at 11.30 p.m. that evening. And that was the last time anyone had heard from Randa. The next morning, at 8 a.m., a personalized public transit service called Your Ride had arrived at her apartment for a scheduled pickup. However, Randa didn't answer the door, and so the driver left. Uh, what's that thing called again? Uber. Taxi? Yeah, Uber. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like uh, it's not an Uber. It was like a scheduled pickup, mm -hmm. you know, for like people with like special like needs. Um, so. The fact that her mother, the night before, or like the day before, actually laid out her clothing for her, and then she had the scheduled pickup in the following morning, kind of indicates to me that she was supposed to go somewhere. I don't know, maybe it was like a medical checkup, mm -hmm. something of that nature. Now, shortly after, at 8.30 a.m., so 30 minutes later, her mother, Anise, had called Randa to check up on her. But when Randa did not pick up her phone, Anise immediately drove to Randa's apartment to check up on her on her own. Um, the front door was open to her apartment, mm -hmm. which is a little bit of a confusing detail because previously it was mentioned that when your ride People arrived at her apartment, they, I guess, called on her door and no one answered. But apparently as Randa's mother arrived, the door was already opened, whatever that means. So Randa's clothing were laid out on her bed as if she never touched them. Her bed didn't seem to have been slept in. The co coffee pot was still cold and nothing was missing from her home, not even her coat, identification documents or her cigarettes. And she was a chain smoker. So leaving without her cigarettes would only indicate that she leaves for a short period of time. She would not leave on her own will for the whole day without taking her cigarettes or without taking any of her personal belongings at, as well, right? Because Randa is thought to have been wearing only a blue bathrobe that was missing. Uh, because, yeah, that was the only item that was missing from her home, that blue bathrobe. And she did not have any prior history of leaving the house without telling someone about it beforehand. So it's very strange. Um, the details that, you know, I just kind of provided you sort of indicate to me at least that Randa, for one reason or another, abruptly left the apartment, either on her own free will or she was maybe even potentially abducted because looks like none of these items have been moved and she didn't even seem to have slept in her bed that's why i'm saying that you know i think whatever happened to her happened to her somewhere around midnight or soon after midnight or sometime before the your ride people arrived at her home so by the time randa's mother arrived at her apartment complex things were already um cold you know be, she had already not been in the apartment for a while in my opinion what do you think anything kind of jumping out to you right now honestly the day prior that is already kind of odd like all over the place with she, the with the mcdonald's McDonald, yeah the cops and then the mom coming in laying her clothes out for her it already is kind of weird what yeah, do you think about it yeah at least the mcdonald's that's mm -hmm. what stood out to me mm -hmm. is this a normal behavior or is her going through McDonald's potentially somehow connected with the fact that she had stopped taking her bipolar medication for some time at that point? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just what's jumping to my mind. And were her family notified about it, though? About the McDonald's? Yeah. I don't know, dude. I really have no idea if 
they were notified mm -hmm. or if this was a regular thing. This is not public information. Yeah, because you mentioned that whenever she goes out, she would inform someone. So was someone was someone informed when she was out for McDonald's? Obviously, she walked. And it was a big thing because the cops brought her back. Did anyone know about it? Yeah. Well, the thing is, when you ask for money, I don't think it's a big crime. Mm -hmm. Big enough for your family members to be notified. Do you know what I'm trying to say Yeah, here? that's true. But at the same time, my question is that, does she even inform anyone whenever she's out and about, like, within a short distance, like McDonald's, within the neighborhood? Was that a thing? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, um, during the research, I was able to find out that she was in very, uh, like, she communicated with her family members on a very uh, regular basis. Mm -hmm. And she would leave, like, like these uh, voicemail messages that were super long, super detailed. And sometimes she would ha have to make a second voicemail message just because the first voicemail message like ran out of time. Mm -hmm. That's how long her voicemails were. And she would talk to her uh, sister and uh, I think mother on a, reg on a daily basis. She also was seeing her daughter on a daily basis. Uh, so to me, it seems like she was someone who was in constant, constant communication. So even trips to McDonald's, I feel like at this point would be... She would mention it. Yeah, she would mention it yeah. to her family members. So that's a good question. And I think you have a good point here. That, mm -hmm. that maybe she would mention this McDonald's trip. I have no, no other information about what actually happened in the McDonald's, unfortunately. Because there might be trips wherein she never told anyone. And including including the the trip, maybe she took a trip at midnight and she just never went back. Yeah, and I liked where you're kind of leaning towards because some of the information I'm, I'm about to bring up mm -hmm. kind of corroborates this line of thinking. So let's get into it, right? So police and volunteers searched fields, roadways, and other areas in the days following her disappearance. A helicopter was also called in to assist in the search. Neighbors on each side of Randa's apartment were questioned, because if you remember from the map, there's kind of similar homes adjacent to that house. Like, it's, it's like a mini cul-de-sac, like I would say. Uh, all of the neighbors seemed to have been at home at the time when she went missing. But they didn't report seeing anything unusual, so the neighbors didn't see anything unusual. A male neighbor who knew Randa, he had gone fishing the night before Randa went missing at Crane Lake in Fenton Township, which is located around 5 miles away, but it is actually easily reachable by car since the lake and the apartment complex are both adjacent to the main highway of the city. This man cooperated with investigators. They even searched the lake, but found no signs of Randa. So it seems like they were scrutinizing this guy a little bit, but he seems to have came out clean. Now, the apartment complex only had one security camera, and the quality of the surveillance footage was poor, and it did not show a clear view of Randa's apartment's door. The camera had captured an unidentified vehicle entering the parking lot at 5 a.m., then leaving around a minute later. Since it was too dark outside, investigators were not able to identify the make of the car nor its license plate. Police do not know if this car is in any way connected to Randa's disappearance, but they seek to talk to the driver of this vehicle. I vote that it is. Really? Yeah. I know, just throwing my thoughts out there. Mainly because uh, who would drive at 5 a.m.? To that small yeah. apartment comp. It's not even an apartment complex. It's a one-story house. Mm -hmm. When I first read the story, and 
I thought, okay, it's just a car at 5 a.m. driving into a big apartment complex. It's not that strange. This is looks like maybe an apartment complex with like two apartments or like one. And for a car to drive in at 5 a.m. to this small piece of land, to me, kind of indicates that this is like, has to be somehow connected. Intentional. Intentional. Yeah. Was there any business center or schools nearby? Um, that's actually a good question. Let me actually uh, whip out the map because I have a map here. Mm -hmm. No, actually, no. It looked like where she was living in 3464 West Shiawassee Avenue, Fenton. It really looks like a very residential neighborhood, just homes. If you're going there, you're going there for a specific reason. There is Fenton High School, but it's like way out on so the right side. So yeah. it's not there. So if I'm going to Fenton High School, will I drive towards that apartment or is there any other way? Oh, you're definitely not driving in that apartment, I feel like. You're, there's no reason to be in 3464 West Chayavasi Avenue because that a particular location is deep into the neighborhood. You know what I mean? It's not like on the edge mm -hmm. where the neighborhood would begin. It's deep, deep into that residential neighborhood. There's no reason for you to be there at 5 a.m. unless you have to be there for a reason. Mm -hmm. And now I want to bring up the CCTV footage. So I'm going to be showing the CCTV on our YouTube channel. We do have uh, law enforcement has released it. I'm going to show you really quickly. It's nothing like magical. Honestly, it's just a car entering the cul-de-sac at around 5 a.m. So, and uh, tell the audience what you see here. For those who are not watching the YouTube channel, a car just drove in. Now, what's going to happen is this is a motion activated security footage camera. So we're looking at it right now. It's it's blue. The screen just got blue because there's no motion. But then a minute later, it started picking up the same vehicle leaving the apartment complex. And you see, it's kind of hard to say what kind of a vehicle it is. It looks like a four-door sedan type of a vehicle to me. Um, it's impossible to tell the make. I think it's even impossible to tell what kind of a color this car was, right? I mean, I can't identify the color. I can only see a black car. A black car, yeah. Or like maroon or something. 5 a.m.? Mm-hmm. Okay, so knowing the fact that the house, the apartment is somewhere far away from any business centers, any schools, it would definitely make us assume that whoever was driving that car at 5 a.m. had an intention to be there. Yeah, uh, I, I do agree with that line of thinking and I didn't even think about it before. But you know, another angle that I want to kind of give you right now, mm -hmm. what about the fact that when Randa was talking to her sister on the phone at 11.30 p.m., she told her sister she was going to go to bed soon after. She's tired. I'm going to go to bed soon. And this person, if he is connected or she, you know, we don't know who was driving the vehicle. If the driver of the vehicle is connected to Randa's disappearance, they came in at 5 a.m., and remember, Randa didn't seem like she slept in her bed and her clothing were still out. So that would mean that Randa was potentially not sleeping. Waiting for them? I don't know, waiting for some, or couldn't sleep or, or was having, you know, some sort of a potential breakdown, something. Who knows what was happening? But that would mean that she, because she didn't sleep in the bed. But she did tell her sister that she was going to go to bed because she's tired, but she didn't sleep in the bed. If we are thinking that this 5 a.m. Uh, car is connected, because this car didn't arrive at like 1 a.m., which would make more sense to me. But it arrived at 5 a.m. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like there's a lot, there's the whole night mm -hmm. of like missing. Uh, the timeline for the whole night is missing here. Yeah, well, that's true. You know what I mean? Any thoughts about that one? Uh, just a quick question. Do you know the duration? Like, how long was the car in there? Around a minute or two. Just Almo a minute or almost two. Almost like a pickup. Just a pickup, Just then. a pickup, yeah. Almost like a minute. 
And then the only thing missing from her apartment was her bathrobe. Yes, all of her personal belongings uh, were still there. Law enforcement did not find any signs of foul play. Nothing. And I don't think they have any uh, DNA that they got, they, or at least they didn't publicly announce that they have any um, suspicious DNA that they found in her apartment or any other clues that would indicate foul play. She's just missing. And that's pretty much it. And when was this? Which season do you think? February. Still a bit cold then. It's cold in Michigan. Mm -hmm. It's cold. In February, to leave in a bathrobe, it's very cold. It's way underdressed, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just bizarre. Because I was honestly thinking that maybe that's a friend or a lover and wearing a bathrobe 5 a.m. If it's warm enough, maybe would have made more sense than if it's cold, but it's February. It's like really cold for that. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. I completely agree. All of the vehicles in the parking lot have been accounted for except for this one. This is the only vehicle that they couldn't identify. Randa's family was wondering how could Randa leave the apartment complex without triggering the surveillance camera and getting captured by CCTV footage by herself. And an explanation has been proposed that due to her slow pace of walking, Randa would not trigger the camera. However, I'm not sure if this was ever proven. Because think about it. If this vehicle that entered the apartment complex uh, immediately got captured, how would Randa, if she left alone, not in this vehicle, why would she not get triggered by the, by the camera? That would mean that either A, her slow pace of walk would not trigger the alarm, which mm -hmm. I think is possible, but then, I don't know. I feel like it's easily testable. Yeah. And I don't know, law enforcement probably has like, a better understanding of this but you know i'm just throwing it out there that we have no idea about this one and then b would be that she did leave from somewhere else like uh from an angle that was not covered by the camera which is i guess a possibility maybe she walked through like the backyard or something like that or I don't know. Honestly, the layout of this apartment complex is a little bit of a mystery for me. And then C, the last option would be that she was in fact in the vehicle that we've just seen. So there's only three ways that th things could have happened here. Either she's too slow and she's not getting picked up by the CCTV. Either she walks around the corner or something like that. But I guess I assume that that's not the most convenient way of walking. So would she really do that? I don't really know. And then option number three, that she was in fact in that, in that unidentified vehicle. When you told me about it, I immediately assumed that she was waiting by the door and got picked up by the vehicle and left. Okay. Yeah, no, that's that that could be a possibility. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna discount that. Yeah, because it seems like a very quick pickup. Like, it's the car was there for just a minute, maybe in less. and out, in and out. So I was just assuming that she was already waiting by her door, waiting for that car, and then when she saw it approaching, she immediately went out, went to the passenger seat, and they left. Yeah, because the camera mm -hmm. does not. Over, have an overview of her door. Yeah. Just kind of the driveway. So she could have just gotten into the vehicle. Yeah, that's what I assume so. Yeah. What do you think is the most logical one here? You know, let me bring up the last clue mm -hmm. and then, then we can talk about it. In April of 2009, a few months after she had miss, went missing, Fenton police had released a sketch of a man who had accompanied Randa on several dentist appointments in Flint, Michigan, which is 20 miles away, in October and November 
of 2008. So just someone who was uh, a point, uh, someone who was taking her to dentist appointments just month before she went missing. This tip was called in by the receptionist at the dentist clinic where Randa was, you know, going for the dentist appointment. The receptionist told investigators that this man was waiting impatiently for Randa and asked multiple times how much longer the appointment would take. So maybe he kind of made a bit of a nuisance of himself, just enough for the receptionist to kind of have that mental picture of this guy. And uh, yeah, so we have a sketch that has been made um, of this person. The man is described as being between 30 and 35. He wore black leather jacket and silver neck chains. So like, like chains, like, like silver chains, right? And he's not considered a suspect in Randa Javari's disappearance. But investigators would like to talk to him and find out if he had heard from her since she vanished. Despite appeals, for this man to come forward, he had never talked with investigators and his identity remains a mystery. But certainly, this person knows about Randa's disappearance and he certainly must know that law enforcement is trying to contact him. So for him to not come forward is a little bit suspicious in my opinion. Um, talk to me, Rain. What do you see here? Can you describe this man to our audience from the sketch? Kind of scary, actually. I don't know. It gives me an impression of like a bad boy gangster-ish. What do you think? Yeah, I mean the the silver chains. Yeah, the silver leather jacket. Leather jacket, silver chains. Looks like being impatient at the dentist. Like how long is this going to take? How long is it going to take? Mm -hmm. Definitely not painting. A good picture. A good picture. Yeah. Here. Yeah. And this. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Continue. Continue. Oh no please. no no! Uh, just really quickly, I am also getting the impression that it could he could somehow be a lover. Yeah. So law enforcement stated that their relationship is unknown. Actually, I have this information. Randa's family members and other witnesses had seen this man hanging out with Randa a month before her disappearance. However, no one knew his real name. Right. So someone his her family members had seen him with Randa. Police have created a composite sketch, but so far all they know about the man is his street name. So he also has a street name. What's his street name? I don't know. Oh. We, it wasn't released, but he has a street name. So that's another kind, you know, it's also like building a picture, right? Yeah. Back in 2016, Fenton Police Chief Rick Avro said, we're not sure exactly what the re relationship was there if it was friendship or if it was more of a romantic relationship. We're not really sure what it was. I'm aiming for, I'm leaning towards romantic relationship mainly because of the dentist appointment. You wouldn't go to your friend's dentist appointment. I know I wouldn't. Um, it's going to um, be too boring for me. The thing is, Randa relied on other people for lifts. Mm -hmm. So it's not like... Oh, I'm bored. Come with my come come to my dentist appointment. It's more of a situation where it's like, I need to go to the dentist. My my teeth hurt. And Do you think that's also the reason why this guy was so impatient? Yeah, because maybe he had to be somewhere, mm -hmm. and maybe they were just as friends or hanging out. But but the fact that he never came out, and I would find it very hard to believe that he wouldn't know about Rhonda's disappearance. There had been billboards all over the city with her name, uh, with her picture on it. So he definitely knows that Rhonda is missing and he knows that he is the guy that law enforcement is looking for. And he never, sh never came forward. Why would you not come forward? That's the real question. Because he's guilty. Of, or know something, you know? Why yeah. would you, why would you not come forward? So, or maybe he's completely innocent. And if he is, then it would be great if he would just come forward and explain and shed some more light on yeah, But he never schemes. did, though. He never did, yeah. And it's been 15 years at this point. Randa's DNA is on file, and she's listed with multiple missing person agencies. Investigators believe that if someone came forward with the right tip, they will be able to solve this case and bring closure to Randa's family. If you or anyone that you know have 
any information regarding Randa Javari's disappearance, please contact Crime Stoppers. A cash reward of up to $2,500 is offered for information that leads to the arrest of the person or persons responsible for her disappearance. With Crime Stoppers, you remain anonymous, so if you know something, there's some money on the line for you. So you could contact Crime Stoppers. One last thing, or, or if we're going. Oh, no, no, no. We're still going to talk about oh, theories. Perfect. Perfect. But uh, this is where we're going to kind of discuss the theories. But uh, yeah, what, what, what are you saying? So she was only wearing her bathrobe. bathrobe. That's the only thing missing. And this person picked her up. Well, we're assuming this person picked her up. I do... Well, I, I'm getting the impression that they're going somewhere close. From an apartment to an apartment or a house. It's not going to be a long drive. Just mainly because of her clothing. I could see a situation where she thinks she's stepping out for a few moments. Because even if she's going to a different house, I think mm -hmm. she's taking more clothing. I think she's taking her identification. And she's definitely taking cigarettes. Oh, what if... It's a lover. A lover's house. I, I still think you take cigarettes. It was mentioned in the research that um, there was a lot of... Everyone was focusing on the fact that she didn't bring her cigarettes. Mm. And that was very strange. Because mm -hmm. as a chain smoker who smokes like a pack a day, you will not leave for a day for like half a day without cigarettes. Because you will be smoking every, what, 20, um, 30 minutes? Unless that person already has something with them. But you're not assuming that. And, and a pack of cigarettes is such an easy thing to carry with you. Mm -hmm. So you're going to grab yours just in case. You're not going to take that chance that, oh, someone else is going to keep giving me cigarettes all day long. You're so, going to take your own cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you think she was taken? I think she may have went outside willingly, mm -hmm. not assuming that it would be a long time. Mm -hmm. And then something happened. And if that vehicle is involved, then at the point where they're leaving the apartment, I don't think she's she's uh, leaving on her own free will at that point. I feel like that could be a, a chance that she was potentially kidnapped. But I don't know. That I'm just speculating. That vehicle could be completely innocent. And the man that we talked about, the one with the silver chains, he could also be completely innocent. But, but it's just weird why no one really came forward, especially the driver of the vehicle. They also know that they have been there mm -hmm. on the day when Randa went missing. I mean, it's they would know. They would know. The, we, the driver of the vehicle would know that I went here on the day when this woman went missing. Unless it's, a, unless it's such a coincidence where that person just, I don't know, just went to the apartment complex and drove out. But remember, her... Um, Neighbors were, were all asked questions, and none of them, as far as I'm aware, said anything about that vehicle that drove into the apartment complex. So the vehicle was not for any one of for for not for any one of them. Mm -hmm. So it only could have been for Randa. Yeah, for it was... who else could the vehicle came into that small parking lot? The location was too specific. Too specific. And none of the neighbors, as I've said, it, it, the vehicle didn't go for any of the neighbors. Mm -hmm. So it's either that person who went for Randa and left with Randa, which I'm now feeling very strongly about this theory. Just for me, it seems that this is the most logical thing to think about right now. Yeah. Or they randomly went into this parking lot in the middle of nowhere. At 5 a.m. At 5 a.m. and then just drove out a minute later. No, no, just no. Uh -uh. It has to be for Randa. Definitely. Just the way I'm thinking, it just has to be for Randa. And the driveway looks wide enough. So, for example, it's that person just randomly went in there and just maybe changed their minds, uh, went back. Yeah. Uh, there, there's no way they they could just like maneuver themselves out yeah. there without going to that specific location. It's too inside yeah i guess yeah so when you think about this case right there's kind of two theories that are 
that, that are here. So the, the two most prevalent theories are first that Randa at that point was uh, in a bad mental state, right? She was especially vulnerable given the fact that she had been um, asking for money at McDonald's, getting a police car ride earlier in the day. But then later on, it seemed like everything was normal for the rest of the day. She even spoke to her sister, and I don't think the sister reported anything strange from the conversation that she had. But maybe something was already happening there, especially due to the fact that she had stopped taking her bipolar medication three months leading up to her disappearance, and that she walked out. Somehow, she doesn't get captured on the CCTV camera, and she runs into an accident or runs into foul play sometime in Fenton at night. That's one line of thinking. And the second line of thinking that she has been potentially abducted from her home or from the parking lot area. And that maybe that vehicle that we've seen on CCTV is somehow involved. So there's two, line of think uh, two lines of thinking. And honestly, for me personally, I could see both of them being the case. I mean, the vehicle is so suspicious. The more you think about it, I'm telling you, the more you think about the vehicle, the more suspicious that vehicle gets to me. You know how you sometimes think about the details and you kind of clear them in your head and they don't seem that suspicious sometimes? The more I'm looking at this CCTV of this car and the more I'm thinking about it, the more suspicious that particular vehicle is getting to me. So I'm kind of, yeah, leaning towards that there was foul play and that that vehicle is potentially connected. That's that's what I'm leaning towards. What, what are your thoughts? I was thinking maybe this guy with, with the street name and the leather jacket and the silver chain was a lover. And uh, she was waiting for the lover the whole night and then the lover picked her up. This guy, same guy with the same car. And that's why he's not coming forward because if he comes forward, the police would know it's his car immediately. But that's the thing. Even if they know what car the guy was driving, I don't think they could connect that car with the car in the surveillance footage, right? Because the car in the surveillance footage is unidentifiable. It's very hard to, to, to kind of get any characteristics off of it. Do you know what I mean? Even yeah. if this guy comes forward and he is driving a Toyota Camry, it doesn't really, I think, say anything because... Mm -hmm. There's no way law enforcement could say, oh, it was a Toyota Camry. No, you can't even, it's undescribable, the vehicle in this CCTV footage. I mean, people who are listening to this podcast, they really need to go to our YouTube channel and check out the CCTV footage because for me and for my eyes, it's impossible to tell what type of vehicle it is. And even law enforcement was actually working with the FBI on this one and they were not able to tell what vehicle was this. Not the make, not the license plate numbers, nothing. Okay, so generally speaking, once again, I told you about kind of two ways people are thinking about this case. It's either an accident or foul play somehow connected potentially to that vehicle at 5 a.m. Uh, what, where would you be leaning towards this one? Foul play, because I'm just thinking about it. Earlier in the day, she went to McDonald's to ask for some money. I'm assuming that she didn't have any, so she resorted to practically begging. And then the whole day the whole night probably she wasn't sleeping the bed was untouched maybe she's contemplating on she was contemplating on it or having second thoughts she left her apartment wearing only a bathrobe into an unidentified car at 5 a.m we don't know it any yeah, of these of course. details uh, but it's interesting. It's inter an interesting angle, but you are leaning towards it. This wasn't an accident, and there's too much kind of coincidences with a vehicle being there. Yeah, me too. Uh, I also think that somehow that's potentially what has happened here. Mm -hmm. I would say I would love to hear what our audience thinks about this uh, case, Randa Jawari's disappearance, and uh, what do you think about the CCTV footage? Uh, what do you think about the guy who was accompanying Rhonda to dentist appointments and seemed to be agitated when he was talking to the receptionist. Um, yeah, think, leave, leave your thoughts uh, in the comment section. Thank you for listening. We'll jump
to the next episode <laughs> soon. We'll see you very soon. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.